Cuento Crimen Podcast. We are a true crime podcast, and these are cases that don't get much media attention, so chances are you haven't heard of some of these cases. Come join us every Wednesday for a new true crime case. Hey everyone! Hola a todos! This is Shahida. And this is Stephanie. And welcome back to Cuento Crimen Podcast on YouTube. <laughs> Um, this is the fourth video going up, which is crazy to mm -hmm. think about. Um, but I do feel like for some reason, these feel like a lot faster than the episodes themselves, like mm -hmm. on the actual podcast. Yeah. Um, but maybe because these are just a bit more like casual, casual, laid back. Yeah. More Don't conversation know. and yeah. whatnot. So anyways, if you tune in again, thank you so much for the support. And we are so glad and happy to hear that someone's enjoying these little segments. Because <laughs> um, I know I'm enjoying like reading the stories. Yeah. They're, they're kind of like, give me the goosebumps. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Like the one from today that I'm about to read to y'all. That one. Yeah. That one is a bit. I guess it's kind of like creepy, spooky, unsettling of the what ifs. Of the what ifs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The what ifs. Because these are all really what ifs. Yeah. You know? Um. So yeah, so let's get started, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so again, I have the story right here. Um, we also got this one from Reddit, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I know like the gist, but I just want to read off of it so I don't mess anything up. Mm -hmm. So it says, have you almost gotten kidnapped? Yes, I think I was kidnapped, actually. I had no clue about this until a year or two ago. I had a friend for only a year when I was around eight years old whose name was Jenny. And then in parentheses says, I know, I know. But Steph and I were talking about it. We don't know. <laughs> I don't know what's yeah. wrong with the name Jenny. I don't know if like there's a movie or something. Uh, yeah, or, like, I don't know. It, no, I don't know. Because it's like Jennifer's, right? Yeah, the probably. roommate that's like trying to kill her roommate. I forgot the name. Oh, maybe know. it's that? Which Jenny is? for short. I don't know. If but you anyways. know, let us know. <laughs> yeah. Listen in the comments because we're lost. Um, and it says, Jenny moved into my neighborhood and clearly needed a friend. So we had play dates every so often, but always at my house. One day, her stepfather, Ray, came through the kiss and go line. And when he picked her up, he said he was supposed to take me home, too. So we also talked about, like, what is a kiss and go line? And I think this is like the... The quick pick and go for like um school dismissal because mm -hmm. i know my school has it too like you can't park you just load the kid and go mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe that's another way to say it and it goes on my parents had always told me not to go with strangers and that they'd give people a special password to let me know if it was okay to go with them but this guy was not a stranger and so i didn't think twice about it and that's also kind of scary because a lot of the cases that we talk about like when it comes to like children being kidnapped, it's yes, yeah, sometimes it's a stranger, mm -hmm. but most times it's like a family friend or a family member. Mm -hmm. So always, I think that's something to also mention to kids. And so she didn't think twice about it. And she ended up going to Jenny's house and things felt really uncomfortable. Ray ended up really creeping me out, but I can't say why now. I knew there were bad people out there, but they were strangers. My parents got me from Jenny's house and there was some tension, but I didn't know why. Well, my mom recently told me that they had not asked Ray to pick me up and didn't know why he did. I guess they learned from a teacher about how I had left school and went to find me pretty quickly. So I wasn't there long. I don't remember anything crazy happening. I don't know if he really didn't have any ill intentions, if I just blocked something out or if there just wasn't enough time for something to happen. Later, Jenny confided in me that Ray would abuse her. I don't think I ever reported it, and she ended up moving away a year after she arrived. I hope she's okay now. Oh, man. That ending, though. Yeah. It is a bit crazy. Yeah, it leaves about. you like on the what if. Like, if there were more time, I wonder what would happen. Or also, like she says, you know, like, did her mind block anything out? Because, mm -hmm. you know, sometimes, like, if you go through something super dramatic, like, your mind would just completely cut it off of your memory. So it's like, was that, like, a, something that could have happened to her? That's scary, like, how like how we're able to block something out. Yeah. Or also, like, the whole, like, stranger, not stranger situation. Like, yeah, that's your next door neighbor. But technically, like, you don't really know this person. Like, they just moved in. You've never been over 
But again, like as a kid, I could definitely see myself saying, that's not a stranger. Like I know Mm. this person, you know? So I think that's crazy and wild because like your parents are okay with you having a play date with her. And it's like, then it should be okay for her to go over, you know? But I wonder why she never went over. Yeah. Like what was in that house that they didn't want her to see Mm -hmm. or, you know what I mean? Or like, I don't know. The fact that she felt that it was an an easy Mm -hmm. situation and she's only eight again you know gut feelings never lie yeah and then i think the fact that later on swamiya le dijo that like she would get abused by her stepfather definitely a red flag Mm -hmm. so something something to think about but yeah luckily nada le pasó and she was just there for a little bit and her parents were quick to react Mm -hmm. um y como dice yeah hopefully jenny's okay Mm -hmm. wherever jenny is you know yeah Okay, I have the second story here on my laptop, and it's also from Reddit, so I'm going to be reading it, Uh, and it goes like this. I was six years old. My parents took me to a park with my sisters. The building of the bathrooms was between the playground and the parking lot, meaning you couldn't see the parking lot from the playground. I went to the bathroom by myself, as it was in the middle of the day, and both my sisters were taking up my parents' attention. After I came out of the bathroom, I got turned around and walked into the parking lot instead of towards the playground. I was six after all. A white middle-aged man was sitting in a pickup truck, and I walked past the door to get back to the playground. And he opened the door and put his arm around my neck, and he said into my ear, his name, like the kid's name, don't you dare make a sound. I had never seen this man before, or if I had, he didn't stick out in my mind. He dragged me into the car and started the pickup. I realized what was happened and freaked out. Amazingly, my reaction wasn't to cry, but to launch myself in his direction and bite his forearm. He started cursing and shoving at me. I bit into I tasted blood and then managed to dash out of the vehicle before he could collect himself. I went back into the bathroom and washed the blood out of my mouth and went back to the playground. My parents were mad at me for wandering off, but I had only been gone for a few minutes, so they didn't think much of it. I didn't tell them what happened. I am not sure I ever will, because I don't want them to blame themselves for not keeping a close enough eye on me. Oh, I know, the ending. The ending. That is, wow, I never thought about that, like the other side of how they must feel like Mm -hmm. you know i don't know i think i think this kid should tell his parents i think i think he should i think if for some reason you're watching this i think you should tell your parents not so much to try to make them feel guilty but Mm -hmm. just like i don't know like to be aware for them to be grateful that nothing happened Mm -hmm. you know and like for them to be proud of you because like the fact that like you reacted so quickly like imagine a six-year-old i feel like i would have cried i feel like i'd have been like it's game over but you didn't like you were brave enough to think of something and Mm -hmm. think of something quick yeah that's so sweet that he's like trying to protect his parents yeah from like that i don't know like feeling guilty but i feel like it's a learning experience for everyone for the six-year-old and also the parents yeah no matter what time of day how busy the park is you know, the bathroom is just walking distance and you mm-hmm. can see it. You know, you can never be too careful. Yeah, exactly. And those are also the thing, like in situations where like it does end badly, like say if he had been taken, like I don't feel like the parents are guilty. I feel like those things just happen in a split of a second. Mm-hmm. And it's like it could happen to anyone at any time. Como dijiste, so. mm-hmm. And also the fact that the guy knew his name. Yes, I was just going to say that. That's creepy. That means he was probably like watching like kind of planning Mm -hmm. to go after this kid or maybe oh maybe the guy could have been like walking in the park and heard the name name. but what are the chances that he would remember that kid's name like you know he didn't know unless like okay because i feel like people that do this son gente Mm -hmm. con maña right and like they know how to do it now so i feel like maybe si llegó al parque he's kind of like i ain't okay like which one am i you know gonna go for that one so if he's been there and he's watching for a Mm -hmm. while chances are he probably did hear his parents call his name yeah you know yeah that's true but that is creepy though. that is creepy and this is definitely like a kidnap story it's like no what ifs maybe no like this that's is, frightening like this yeah. person 
put their hands on a kid, you know? Put them in his truck. Yeah. And the fact, like, don't make a noise or a sound. Yeah. So. That's so scary. Yeah. Just glad that this is how this story ended mm-hmm. and that um, this boy made it out alive mm-hmm. and um, was able to go back with his parents. Yeah. Uh, let us know what y'all think in the comments. And I think that we also know, like, if someone ever does put you in the car, bite. <laughs> bite. <laughs> bite them. And, <laughs> and don't stop. Taste blood. Yeah. But also kind of wild that he went back into the bathroom to wash it off, you know? Yeah, I was also thinking that too. I was like, no, no, no. Like when you were reading that, I was like, no, 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 don't go into the bathroom. Yeah, because they could still come after you. Yeah, he could definitely still come after him. So that was brave. But you know, as a six-year-old, like also like it's crazy to think about like, he's like, oh man, I just bit this guy. Like I don't want to get in trouble and go wash out the blood or something, you know? Yeah, it's kind of like tunnel vision. Like I gotta do this before I go. Also, I do wonder like if anyone in the parking lot heard, because the Mm -hmm. guy probably had to make some like um, sound as he's getting like, you know, like a bite in his arm. Yeah, some kind of struggle there. Yeah. So I wonder if like anyone heard and so maybe it was kind of safe for him to just Mm -hmm. go to the bathroom. But never safe enough because that man is still there. So. Yeah. But yeah, that is the two stories that we have this week. Uh, let us know what y'all think in the comments. And y'all can also submit a story to our email. Yes. Um, podcast at gmail.com or on Instagram is where we're more active. We're usually always on there and we're always reading the messages. So mm-hmm. it is a lot more simpler, I guess, to just go on Instagram and da 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 da. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for watching this video and we'll see y'all next time. Bye.